This isn't no monk mode protocol. This isn't for the guy who says, hey, I think my life is fucked. This is for the guy who knows for a fact his life is fucked. This is for the guy who, when he looks around in his room, what he sees is shit all over the place. His room smells like fucking cum. His clothes are full of shit. This is for the guy who, when he sits around to do something, the first thing that pops up in his head is to open porn. This is for the guy who, every single time he sits alone, he decides to fap. This is for the guy who, every single time he's with his friends, they're doing something so bad. And you know exactly what I fucking mean. This is the most extreme monk mode protocol. This isn't your average uh, meditate 10 minutes every single day, exercise 30 minutes a week. This isn't your stupid shit, right? This isn't this kooky bullshit advice. This is exactly what will fix an extremist's life. A guy who's in an extreme situation and needs an extreme protocol to fix his life. I remember back in the day, whenever I was left alone, the first thing that would come up was exactly what you would think. I would go to my bedroom and I'd start fucking hitting it. And this isn't exactly me trying to justify the, the dark period that I was in. But this is just to tell you how much of a bad experience I went through. And that's exactly, like, throughout this video, I'll be telling you exactly what got me out of that situation. Clearly, you're, you've opened this video for a reason. Because maybe the thumbnails got to you, maybe you you were searching for something like this, maybe it just happened to pop up and you were like, hey, I need to fix my life, right? In any case, you came to the right place. You see, throughout YouTube, you will not get what you will get in this video. Truth be told, most people will just try and give you the random clickbaity, do 10 push-ups every single day, and you'll go on monk mode. Truth be told that most people just don't care about you on YouTube. They don't care, they just want to make money off of you. They want to use you. And you might have listened to a monk mode video before and heard all you have to do is just go on a diet and do 10 push-ups every single day and don't don't do don't smoke don't drink and all of a sudden like you're on monk mode truth be told that's that isn't real monk mode at least not the monk mode that you need i remember before i had my monk mode i was in a super dark period i it was exactly 2020 i i was in a very dark stage in my life I would spend the entirety of the years essentially just watching porn and fapping and doing all sorts of bad habits from video games to talking to toxic friends to watching reels all the time to staying up all the time. It was just one of the worst periods of my life. But you see, that's why Monk Mode worked so well for me. Let's just say I managed to stumble upon a video, right? And it was from a guy that we're gonna mention quite soon in this video, throughout the video that is. And essentially this guy just, he managed to develop a really good protocol that helped me. And with a couple of additions that I've added, a couple of things that I found helpful, I essentially managed to escape the dark period of my life. Throughout 2021, throughout all that dark period, things got more worse and more worse and more worse, and eventually it led to me almost catching myself in a smoking addiction. It led to me to, which by the way, like, I'll make a separate video on this, but I literally, I got a very casil because of how much I fapped throughout those years. And now I'm paying the consequences for those actions. But that's besides the point. 
I managed to make my brain much more worse in the sense that I was frying my dopamine receptors all the time. And all that because of just simply basic social conditioning and all of a sudden you've got a brain dead person who literally is just fucked up. Throughout this video I'll talk all about exactly the, the monk mode protocol that I followed that fixed my life. And I'll also talk about basic concepts that will help us throughout this video. But I do need one thing from you. Before we move on, I'm pretty sure that with your attention span, and I'm not trying to like say this to offend you, but I'm pretty sure that you've scrolled, at least from the start of this video, you've scrolled, looked at the suggested videos, or looked at the comments. And trust me, the video won't ever help you if you don't focus on it. And so, if you want this video to truly help you, just make the video full, full screen. Make the video full screen. Maybe get a notebook, right? Start writing notes. Just to kind of like get yourself to just be a little more mindful. To actually focus with me here. Because like this, this isn't some joke, right? If you don't want this video to help you, then why are you even watching? Just get off, right? But like we want to fix your life here. This isn't just a question of saying hello to a random person in the street. Right? I think you understand what we're actually fixing up. This is, a, this is an entire person's life. And that person just happens to be you. And so, if you want this to help you, just make the video full screen. Maybe think and consider about getting a notebook and actually writing notes about this. Step one, purpose. Now, for any monk mode protocol, there has to be some direction that you're going to be moving toward. And it just so happens that purpose fulfills that. You see, purpose is what you follow, what 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 moves you, right? It's almost like motivation. Now, there is a purpose, like the core purpose and the, the purpose layers. Now, core purpose is essentially the concept of at some point, someone is like, you're going to reach an end point, an end goal. Like you will have an end goal. And then when you fulfill that goal, essentially you just like get sick and die, right? Like after you fulfilled it, you're fulfilled, you're super happy with your life and all of a sudden like, Sick and died, undead, right? And you've got the purpose layers. The purpose layers are like essentially what build up because of social conditioning, because of all sorts of stuff. You're basically conditioned from being a child to literally just like go to school, get the get the education, go into the education system, go to college, and do all sorts of stuff, right? Stuff, right? Essentially, these end up becoming. Purpose layers upon purpose layers upon purpose layers. That one friend talks about that business model, and all of a sudden you want to start doing dropshipping, right? These are added on purpose layers. And purpose layers, they, they can be destroyable, but also they can be fulfillable, depending on if it's a per good purpose layer or a bad one. You see, for a long time, I'm going to just mention an example of a bad purpose layer. For a long time, I... About last year almost... I got into a karate gym, right? And I've talked a lot about it, about it in, in these videos. But essentially, I got in there for about a year with the goal to get the black belt and then leave. And then I got the black belt, but then there was another purpose layer. I wanted to join the team of karate players for the national, like the national team for like my country, right? That was essentially placed onto me by my captain. Because it's not so good for a captain to lose his valuable player, right? And I didn't realize that my purpose layer had already been fulfilled. I already fulfilled what I wanted to say. I wanted to get the black belt and I got the black belt. What now? I don't like I, I don't want I didn't really want to join that. It was, like, it was just kind of put upon me. I was conditioned onto it. And so I ended up essentially just after discovering this. I ended up slacking up on karate. I ended up quitting. In fact, I, I I quit a couple of days ago. This is like a recent example, just to kind of give you an idea about this. Uh, today it was exactly today actually. There was a course that like the captain wanted me to go in, 
And I still I still go to the gym part of the karate gym because it's a karate gym. It's a karate and a gym. There's like there's like weights and then the karate section. I I like I essentially said this to myself as an I'm not gonna go into that karate section. I'll just stay in the gym. I'll get an hour in, go to the weights, lift some weights, and leave. And I won't go inside. He came up to me and he was like, "Hey, we have a course on Friday. If you want, like we can like sign up and all that." And I literally told him, "Hey, I'll I'll tell my father. I'll think about it," because I like I was like just kind of like trying to get him off to postpone him, right? And then I slacked up on him, and it was today. And like he posted a story, assuming like I'm assuming that it's like probably just to kind of just show me, "Hey, look, like we're having fun. And you're sitting on your ass." But he doesn't realize that it's not even my purpose. Besides so the point, went on a rant. Purpose layers can be destroyable. They can also be fulfillable. So, for example, you could have a goal of bulking up. And that will be your purpose layer for the next six months. You have set the goal that you will reach 86 kilograms. And so you bulk up that you make it you make it that full goal, the goal of, of concentration, right? That's purpose layer. And on monk mode... These purpose layers are what will help us a lot. This will set the direction for us. And so I want you to do this practice. I want you to go ahead, get a sheet of paper, and I want you to simply write 10 goals. 10 goals that you have in your mind. 10 goals. Quite basic. Just write down 10 goals that you want to achieve in the next year, let's say. Then... After you will do that, so you, you you can pause right now, and then continue later on, like after I, after you're done with the first step. Then, you will go ahead, and like after having written ten, I want you to choose and circle three of the most important ones for you. So choose the like the most important one for you, the the one that will like, the one that you just like kind of feel is the one that you need to fulfill the most. The most important one for you. Circle three of those. The three most important ones. And I want you to aggressively go ahead and just wipe those ones out. The ones that you didn't circle. All of them. All the seven that you didn't circle. I want you to aggressively wipe them out. Whether that be by like going ahead and like scratching over them. Or maybe erasing them if you like wrote it with a pencil. And make the three your focus. So this will kind of set you in. And maybe those three that you chose were in a specific area of life. So maybe like you wrote goals about finance and, and health and fitness. And then the three goals managed to be in health and fitness and not in finance, right? Maybe they're intermixed. Could very well be. And it's fine. It's like you don't have to go ahead and pay attention to it. Like that, like what I'm saying is like after you've done that, you take that into consideration. Essentially, what we've done right now is we've set you some priorities. We've got you to choose a goal above other goals. And those other goals that you're thinking about, travel to Greece or whatever, these goals don't make nothing. Those goals are no, of no benefit. Those goals, seriously, they're just like... They were things that were put onto you, most likely. And it could also be, like, they can kind of be interlinked into what you circled, and it just happens that the wording that you chose for the ones that you circled was better than the wording for the, the ones that you didn't circle. So before I move forward, I want to talk about something called infinite games. So there's this concept of we apply finite rules to an infinite game. And essentially what this states is, you know, so, so let me explain this, right? You've got a finite game. A finite game is a game that the players are known, and like, you know the amount of them as well. There's a timer and there's an objective to complete. Got it? An infinite game is a game where some players are known, others are not. There is no time. Or the time is like unknown for it. And the point of the game is to keep playing. So essentially, 
it can kind of come to your mind now as we apply finite rules to an infinite game. So an example of a finite game would be something like a football match, right? The players are known. There is an objective, which is to win by scoring goals. And there is a time limit to it. An infinite game is something like life. Life is an infinite game. You know some players and others you don't. There is no time limit because you don't know when you're going to die. And the point of the game is to keep playing. Basic. So now we want to understand why we might, might apply finite games, why finite rules to an infinite game. Finite rules are essentially you saying, "Well, I'll I'll work out, I'll work out for the next two months." Yeah, j just for the next two months, I'll I'll work out for the next two months, with the objective to reach this area. This this goal. And did it come to you? Did you realize it? You're applying a goal, an objective. You're applying a certain time limit to what you're doing. But then you see, the gym is actually an infinite game. Bodybuilding is an infinite game. The point of the game is to keep playing. You're not just going to do it for two years and then quit. Because what's the point of the two years? You're going to lose the progress that you made. You're not going to be maintaining it. And see, we don't apply infinite game, infinite rules to infinite games. We apply finite rules to infinite games. You can see what where we're going with this. Essentially what we need to do is we need to actually understand our motives, understand why we do this thing. And we also need to understand, am I actually kind of like backing off and saying like, oh yeah, I'll just do it for one month. And if so, is it really like, can it be avoided completely? So for example, do I really need that black belt? Let's be honest, man. Do I really need that black belt? I probably don't. Why waste the next year going ahead and just practicing karate and practicing all sorts of different stuff and then all of a sudden just say, hey, uh, I'm leaving. Because after that year, you'll just forget everything you learn. Oh yeah, but I belt strength, guys. You could just fucking practice strength, right? It's not, it's not a fucking rocket science shit, right? All this stuff just kind of interlinks. Life is an infinite game. And many things in life are infinite games. And so if you want to be truly succeeding, if you want to truly be consistent with what you're doing, you want to do it with the m mindset that I will do this forever. As long as I live, I will do that thing. As long as I live, I'll keep going to the gym. Obviously, can like yeah, like we we all miss days, right? Don't don't be stupid with this. For the rest of my life, I'll keep on with this business. For the rest of my life, I'll. You get the point. And also, you wanna cancel out the 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 influences that have been placed upon you. So right now, you might be coping with all something. And obviously, like, we're moving along in the sections and the, the steps. We'll kind of break a bit of those. But right now, I just want you to... I want you to seriously, like, be, be real with yourself. Are you coping with anything? Is there something that you're doing that you know you shouldn't be doing? Is there something that you, you're doing that, like... It's not necessary, man. You know it's not necessary. And yet you're like kind of committed to it. I want to learn guitar. All that sort of crap. There's something that you're doing. And it's probably not the best thing. Step two. Dopamine detox. So dopamine detox is basically cutting out all there is of distraction. All there is of bad habits. It essentially states that for you to actually progress to actually escape the 
mental unclarity, the mindlessness that you live in. You need to cut out those things. What are those things? You've got video games. You've got socials. You've got Netflix. You've got all the bad habits, maybe smoking, porn, fapping, and obviously, like, we're gonna, like, these addictions, right, I just want to, like, go on a side rant here. You want to quit porn first before fapping. Beware of this, because, like, some people, some people succeed in quitting both at once. But for the majority of the guys that will say, no fup's not working for me. Just want to kind of tell you a little secret here. You want to quit porn first, and then fapping. We're going to have a no-fap full guide, by the way. I'm just saying. And essentially, these things that are pulling you back, that you know are pulling you back, and these are just like some examples. There are, like, there are certainly a whole lot more of these. But essentially, there's a lot of things that are pulling you down, a lot of distractions. And we want to kind of observe you. We want to observe what you do. What you're doing. What are the habits that you have. And in doing so. We just simply like. You, you know yourself. Way more than I do. Right. I know you. But I don't know you enough. I don't know you as much as you know yourself. And so when I tell you that there's something. That you know. You kind of think of what you're coping of. Because when I said Netflix, I'm, I didn't just mean at series and, and movies. Also meant anime. Also meant all sorts of different bad shit that you may be watching. Right? When I meant porn, I meant all porn. When I said bad habits, I meant junk food and sugar. Smoking included smoking drugs. So it's all of these bad habits... You want to eliminate these bad habits. That's essentially, that's dopamine detox. Dopamine detox is fixing this molecule in your brain called dopamine, which is like for pleasure and essentially like it has these weird spikes and troughs and all that. And like when you do a bad habit, it like spikes when when you get it. Like that's like the, uh, in a bro science explanation for instant gratification, right? You get like a peak of of like you know happiness and then it goes into a trough so for example like when you fap you're like super enjoying it you're hyper stimulated and then when you bust all of a sudden trough boom to the ground and you just feel like super sucked out let's just say and you see this is all for a reason we do instant gratification which by the way like instant gratification means essentially just kind of like things that will give you the pleasure today but in the long run they'll just fuck you up and essentially we want to eliminate all instant gratification activities all activities that will give you the gratification right now but will end up fucking you up in the long run that's essentially a dopamine detox and what comes with a dopamine detox essentially comes with purpose you see, I, I believe that dop- I believe that monk mode lands exactly between those two spectrums of here, dopamine detox, and here, purpose. It links, it bridges these two together. And that's what ends up actually like kind of getting you into this big purpose chase. You see, if I didn't do monk mode six months ago, I probably would just be a degenerate today. If I just did a dopamine detox and for whatever reason decided that I'll just stay on my dopamine detox, well, yeah, technically I wouldn't be so degenerate. That's just because of the power of dopamine detox. All the more reason to support dopamine detox. You may be coping right now and you'll be, be, you may be saying that like, this is bullshit. What are you telling me? Like, do you want me to delete my socials? I can't. And like, what if... I get an emergency call and shit, right? But you see, what what we don't see about this is that... Who gives a fuck, bro? Who gives a fuck if you deleted your Instagram? There, like, you know, at least you know a guy who doesn't have Instagram. Like, you don't give a fuck, you still talk to the guy, right? Essentially, 
what we're trying to go about here is we want you to eliminate all bad habits. That means eliminating video, eliminating video games, eliminating porn and fapping, eliminating drugs and all sorts of different substances that may be harming you. It means eliminating Netflix, everything on Netflix. Just fucking hell, dude. Just like fucking get rid of this shit. Junk food, sugar, all sorts of different stimulating shit. These are the main five. And I also have a full guide on addiction for like, because the main, like, mainly these are just addictive stuff. But you see, we can't just eliminate these and say, hey, I'll eliminate these and I'll just live happily ever after. Because truth be told, if your schedule is empty, you'll just end up going back to them. You'll end up stretching your band so far and going right back. So essentially what we want is to follow the basic attack. What is the basic attack? This rule states that essentially just like if you remove a habit but you don't put something instead of that habit that habit will only end up coming back. What does this mean? This means that if you decide to just erase all video games and just say, hey, fuck this shit, I'm just gonna go ahead and live without video games, you don't replace them with anything, you'll end up going back to those video games. What does replacing them mean? This means, for example, instead of those two hours of video games, you go ahead and you find something that's gonna give you happiness, but in a much less, uh, you know, like dopaminergic way, stimulating way. So, for example, the gym is the perfect substitution for video games. When a guy starts going to the gym, and this is like my case with video games, I quit my video game addiction just by going to the gym. I had some way of like quitting this. It was just essentially. Telling myself, hey, I want to hit this weight today. And then hitting it, and I'll, I'd just be so happy. I'd be pumped, and I'd be, like, all stimulated and all shit. And then I wouldn't need the video games. Like, sometimes I would go back and just, like, play video games. But it literally, like, when the guy told me to just race video games, I was like, fuck this shit, bro. I don't need this shit. I mean, I was like, I, I didn't think about that immediately. But with his convincing, I was like, yeah, bro, fuck this shit, man. I don't give a fuck. I, just, I literally erased it, bro. I erased all the fucking video games. Like, right now, if you open my PlayStation, you will literally find nothing but YouTube on there. That's because I just literally watch educational videos, which are like we're going to talk about. But essentially, it's like... You need to replace these habits. You can't just simply try and pull and pull and pull and pull only to go back. Because, like, let's all be real here, dude. If you had an empty schedule, and your mind thought of nothing but porn, you're gonna fap, bro. We all know this shit. You're gonna open the sites, you're gonna go start scrolling, then essentially end up fucking fapping, bro. We know that shit. But you see, we need to eliminate some distractions. We need to eliminate, not some, all distractions. We need to fix our lives. And so if you still, for whatever reason, think that we don't need to, to remove this one thing. If for whatever reason you think that this thing won't differ with me. That it's okay to watch one hour of anime. It's okay to play one hour of video games. It's okay to eat one meal of junk food a week. It's okay to... <sighs> it's not okay. It's not okay. Is it okay to poison yourself once a week? Is it okay to... Is it okay to fucking do drugs for an hour a week? It isn't. And you know it isn't. So why do you cope? Why do you protect these? Don't trust this brain, bro. This brain is literally manipulated. This, this thing is working against you. Don't trust it. Don't trust what it's telling you. It wants to stick to this dopaminergic stimulating thing. It wants to stick to this thing that's literally frying it. 
Don't trust your brain. Do what I'm, I'm telling you, bro. I wish I could just literally like grab you by the ear, move you next to your PlayStation, and erase all your video games. Put a tape on your mouth and stop you from eating sugar because you don't realize the value of actually doing this. You see, like, I don't want to fucking mind about fucking sugar and junk food. But this stuff can go into a fucking tunnel, bro. We're talking about aligning 100% of your life to your purpose. And as we previously stated in step one, we want to find this purpose, this goal for the next six months. And most likely it has to do with the three goals that you circled earlier. Now obviously, I would much rather that you would do that practice that we said about the 10 goals after having eliminated some of those thoughts, some of those things that have been put onto you. That dropshipping business does not matter. Because guess what? Like, I'm gonna go on to around here, but essentially, like, to, to summarize this, dropshipping, like, you're, you're serving a shit product to shit people that don't even know nothing, and they're paying extra for you to deliver them a shit product from a shit company, which, by the way, it's literally just a fucking factory that makes shit and decides to fucking sell it, and it's a low-quality product to low-quality customers. So just fucking remove, like, honestly, like, I know you're gonna fucking hate my decisions right now. You're gonna hate what I'm saying here. But you see, that's not you hating those decisions. It's not you hating these thoughts, these 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 things that I'm essentially telling you about, teaching you about. It's your brain that's hating them. It's your brain that's saying, "No, no, this he's he's all wrong. He's saying all this stuff, and it's like he's he's not. That's absolutely not true, bro. Like that stuff's very wrong. Like uh, you're you're no, bro. Like no, no, this is no, dude. That no, no, <laughs> bro, fucking hell, dude. Don't you realize what your brain is doing right now? Aligning 100% of your life to your purpose means, and this is a rule from a book called The Way of the Superior Man, this essentially states that for you to be able to accomplish this purpose to the fullest and in the fastest time and in the best and most effective way, you must align as much of your life to your purpose. The purpose here is reflecting to the purpose layer that we already have talked about, right? I'm going to assume, of which, like, we're going to talk a bit more about journaling in the last section. Don't skip over there. Don't skip over there. Just simply, like, wait up, watch the video in sequence, and then go ahead and, like, see what we're going to, like, talk about there. But essentially, we're going to talk about journaling. And your first journaling topic is going to be, what is my purpose? And this is essentially your step zero. This was me back in May 1st, after having went back from Turkey, bro. The first thing, I was literally searching for purpose, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I, like, dude, I remember the first time I was, like, searching for purpose, bro. Literally, I was like... I thought it was finance, I thought it was growing this channel, the, the purpose of mine. Turns out, it was actually bulking up. And this was back in May, right? I didn't really know that shit, and the first thing that I came up with was like, yeah, bro, so like, I'm just, yeah, bro, I don't, I don't care, like, this has gotta be finance, I was just like, yeah, bulking doesn't matter, but I ended up fucking canceling out on that one, because I realized that, like, hey, like, I actually need to bulk, it's like, bro, but essentially that's just kind of like me ranting a bit on, like, purpose layer and choosing that stuff. We're going to talk about you getting you to, to do that practice in, like, the journaling section. But essentially, I want you to kind of, like, imagine yourself in your shoes after having done that practice and known your purpose. What you want you to do is to actually... I want you to discover what might be holding you back. 
And we've already talked about distractions and all that shit, and, like, the fucking... Disgusting that like, shit, like, me going in and just wanting to fucking grab you from the ear and just fucking, like, tell you to remove that shit. What we need is actually for you to just simply, like... Align 100% of your life to your purpose. What, what does that mean? What is, what is the meaning of aligning 100% of your life to your purpose? That means... Putting as much hours into your purpose. What? <laughs> so essentially this means... Let's say your, your, your purpose is finance. Your purpose is growing the channel out. You would want to only 100% of your life to your purpose. That means cutting out all the, the stupid shit, which you've already done. Going on dopamine detox, already done. And you're just simply going to record those videos, like the videos that you're going to upload, as frequently and as much of volume as possible. And just going ahead and dropping them. That's it. Do as much work and as much productive work as possible. You see, the reason we say this one hour of anime and this one hour of, of fucking around on video games is not aligning 100% of your life to purpose is because of the fact that it actually is wasting your time. You see, if you put those two hours of anime and video games into that video, you will actually end up like, if you thought for an hour and recorded for an hour, do you see where I'm getting here? There will be significant progress for you if you just simply did those two things instead of just fucking around on anime or on video games. Besides, like, the actual, like, detrimental changes it does to your brain. And the brainwashing you go in both video games, and like undergo in video games and anime. And the reason I say like anime, it was like my limiting belief back then in like May was actually anime. Like the thing that like the thing that I seriously my brain held onto was anime. For you, it might be different, right? There was one guy that I was coaching, and his limiting belief was actually uh, video games. For him, it was like he was just so onto video games. Like he was like, "No, bro, you're you're wrong, bro. Like video games, like they're good for me. Like it's okay, bro. They like they help me. They help me take a rest, bro." And it, like, bro, it broke me, bro, because like the guy just wouldn't get convinced that these things are fucking up his life. You know, like now he's a good bro. Like he's probably watching this anyway. But. Like, it, he was so held on to that thought. And that's the main reason why, like, I was, like, I kind of, like, super, got super enthusiastic. I was, like, I just want to grab you by the ear and just, like, kind of break your limiting beliefs. You see, like, that's just because I know, like, the value of, like, doing this. The sacrifices are so worth it, dude. Like, you will not realize it. And the more you sacrifice, the better. Earlier, like, we've talked about sacrificing my karate. Bro, you do not imagine the amount of progress I've done ever since I've cut out my karate. You will not imagine. Bro, that stuff helped me so much. It's just like, it's just one hour, bro, but you don't get that shit. Waking up early, bro. That stuff helped me so much. You do not believe it, bro. And optimizing sleep and sleeping early and like... Yeah, it's kind of cringy, like, because, like, you used to do it in school, and, like, yeah, we grew up, guys, but it's like, dude, shut the fuck up, bro. Honestly, it's like, it's because you used to do it in school, and now it's, like, something that's bad. Don't you realize that school abused the states that you were good in? To brainwash you? And that's besides the point, right? Without going into fucking Matrix rants. Anyway. This video is going to be quite controversial for most people. Most people will not be able to take this in. But you see, I think you're different. That's why, like, I know for a fact that you're different. You are different. You're, you're the guy who's sitting right there, right in front of me, the guy I'm talking to right now. I know you're fucking different, bro. 
I know you're a different breed of a man than all those other guys that left 20 minutes ago. I know that shit. Because I was you six months ago. That's exactly why it just like, I can feel you so much, bro. And I just really want you to go in this, like, I want you to go in that path that I followed. Because just how good that path was to me. And how much, like, how much sacrifices I put and ended up getting so much better because of those sacrifices. So before we move on, we've got something that's quite an essential for dopamine detox. You see, for most of us, we don't really know much of our time. We don't kind of like... If I asked you, what do you do at 4 p.m. most of the time? Unless you have some specific scheduled thing in there, you usually don't actually like know. Besides so like in your sleep schedule and maybe if you like exercise and go to the gym, right? All the other hours are just random. We want to change that. For this section, in this, this mini section, in the big section, we simply want you to make a timetable. Some strict form of uh, tracking of time. So essentially, you will have everything planned. For example, now we're going to talk about habits just a bit later on. In, in the habits section, we talk about a lot of different things you can use as basic attacks to substitute the bad habits. And so we like we will talk about reading, we'll talk about educational podcasts, we'll talk about full guides, all these things that are like that will help you quite a lot. But you see, you won't be able to do those things just if you said, Hey, I wanna read for one hour or read like twenty pages, uh meditate ten minutes, watch an educational podcast. Watch a full guide and, and exercise. If you said you were going to do these things, most likely you're not going to do them. Just if you said that and you sat on your ass. Why? Because these things aren't exactly engraved into you. You might do them the first day and the second day and the third day. But soon you'll start to realize you're slacking off. You're not as committed as you were the first couple of days. We want to change that. And so scheduling in these things... Scheduling them in into your day will help you break the addictions, break the bad habits, and build these good habits. Why am I being so enthusiastic about this? And well, well, first, how can I do this? Well, how do you do this? It's as simple as downloading a calendar on your phone. Something like Google Calendar like will work brilliantly for this. I, in fact, use Google Calendar to this day from May. Essentially, you want to plan in everything. And we're going to talk about habits just a bit later on, but you want to add in all the things you want to do throughout the day. All the things that you're going to do. And you see, like, back then, I didn't really realize, like, it was like back in May, I didn't realize the importance of the, the stage I was in. You see, the stage you are in of fixing your life to purpose, you don't exactly like, how should I put this? You're not exactly in a stage where your purpose is biting on your fingers. How about I put it like that? And so essentially what I'm trying to say here is you're in a period where most of the information, like the a lot of the learning sessions you're going to get are going to prove to be so, so amazing. See, optimizing my, my sleep was probably one of the first things that I started researching. Because I was having a fuck ton of trouble waking up early and sleeping in on time. And I ended up researching this a lot. And to this day, I still use that information. That same information, I still use it to this day. And... It's probably one of the best things that I've put my time into. Learning those things. and You see, these things that you're facing problems with. 
and you end up learning about in this time period. You have so much free time, bro. Just remove the video games, remove distractions, remove that one hour of Netflix, remove the fucking hour of fapping and porn and all that shit. And all of a sudden, you've got... Let's remove eight hours. You've got 18 hours. 18? 16 hours of just... No, dude, it's 18. 18 hours of just pure-ass work. Work habits. Uh, let's remove an hour of eating and all that shit. You've got so much time. That's the point that I want to get you across. Don't fucking judge me on mathematics, bro. I ain't no nerd, bro. <laughs> I just know fucking adenosine systems. No, man, just kidding. No, bro, science guy. Fuck it up, bro. Anyway. A timetable will... Like, you see... The thing I keep going over again and again and again is that... When you're at this period, like, you're like... Really? Like, is it is it really that, like, is it really that good? You're, like, you're hyping up so much, and you're telling me, make a timetable, meditate 10 minutes, exercise, do educational podcasts, shout out all those things that I, like, my brain loves. And it's like, is it really that worth it? But man, oh man, it's so fucking worth it. It's so fucking worth it, man. That timetable proved to be one of the single best things I put my time into. Sure, it'll take time to like customize those blocks of time and blocks of time, like like on Google Calendar, like you'll get blocks of time, like it'll just show you blocks and you can color them and all that shit. It's super fucking fun, just, just make it. But you wanna actually like make it usable and make it easy. You see, something we didn't really talk about was setting reasonable goals. You see, a lot of guys who go on self-improvement will go ahead and go crazy with their like goals. And yeah, being ambitious is great. To this day, I am called the single craziest person with their goals. But you see, you want to set reasonable goals for your time. What does that mean? That means right now you know your life is fucked and you sit in a stinky ass room that smells like cum and so how do you expect yourself to exactly go ahead and just do all those habits and achieve that superior goal that just happens to be so out of reach what I'm trying to say here is we don't want to go too ambitious with this we want to set reasonable goals that are just outside of reason, just outside, just like, you know, you got my point, right? And essentially, we just kind of like, something that like, will push us to do something, and it'll suck just a bit, not to the point that it'll like, kind of fuck us over, and like, we won't be able to do it, but just to, enough to challenge us just a bit. That's about setting reasonable goals. That's like something I like I should have talked about a whole lot earlier. But bro, you need to fucking do a timetable. Like you need a fucking timetable, bro. What the fuck's wrong with this chair, bro? It's like is this doing or like is this fucking Anyway. That's just fucking weird, bro. Now we're going to go into step three, and it's about essential few. Now essential few is, uh, essential few is a fucking practice, man. I still have it on this, on this wall, bro. Like, I want to try and fucking get this up, but you see, you know what? Fucking on. Oh, shit. I want to try and get this off my fucking wall, bro. But look at this. This is my fucking essential view. You know, hold up. That's about right. Anyway, this is just kind of my essential view. Like, I have it right dead in that. I hope, like, it, it appeared on camera. But you see, I, I haven't really looked at this in a while. So, man, that was a long time ago. 
That was a long time ago, man. So essential few is essentially you. So how about you do this? Get a piece of paper, bro. Get a piece of paper, and I want you to simply write down the goals that you have in mind. Having removed a little bit of like distractions and a bit of shit that like a bit of like shit goals that have been placed onto you. Write down ten goals that you want to accomplish. That you know have a meaning to you. And then what I want you to do is categorize them into areas of life. So for example, if you saw here, I had family, hold up, I'm, like, I'm supposed to show you, bro. I have family, health and fitness, I have finance or like work, and I have spirituality and school. School's fucking up, fucking us over, bro. And essentially, I categorized these goals into Family, health and fitness, work, uh, spirituality, and school. That's essentially kind of what I did for Essential Few. You want to kind of put these goals into this, like this will help you with purpose, right? You want to place these goals into like... You want to place these goals into these areas, categorize them in these areas. And then simply... Go ahead, and I want you to choose one goal that you, like, you suspect is the purpose. Now, amongst these, like, goals that you're going to write for these areas, there is going to be one goal that seems kind of like, oh, yeah, that, that one's, like, the big one for the group. So, for health and fitness, that would be cutting down. Cutting down to, to 70 kilograms. Or it may be... For like finance, getting a hundred subscribers. Basic shit, right? That's the big goal in those categories. And then the small goals would be like get twenty videos up, uh, hit a one hundred kilogram deadlift. No, that's probably a little too light. Anyway, you get my point. These are mini goals, and then you've got like something that's a bit bigger than a mini goal. Usually, that's what portrays the area. Bro, what is this, bro? The paper one I threw. Anyway. <laughs> but essentially, what you want is to simply choose one of those that you think is a purpose. And you can, like... Listen, how about you place the three big ones next to each other? Or the four big ones that you may have. And I want you to simply just go ahead and... I want you, when you go ahead, like, we're going to talk about journaling, right? Very soon. Essentially, I want you to go ahead and just, like, when journaling, mention those. Mention those three and be like, why would this be my purpose? Well, that one's probably a bit more likely to be my purpose. Oh, but you see, this is a bit more important to me than that one, isn't it? I kind of want to do this one a whole lot more than that one. And just start, like, kind of going around in your brain. Saying, no, man, I don't know, man, this just doesn't seem right to me. And I want to tell you something. There is not a bulletproof answer to it. You will not get a clear answer. To this day, I do not know if my purpose for now it's like bulking up. I don't like. I don't know, bro. I'm just fucking working towards bulking up. That's that's what I'm working toward. There's not a bulletproof answer, but there is a vision. There is something that's like, I don't know what's behind this wall, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do this thing because like I I believe in something. And you just want to kind of get this feeling. To one of those. One of those that you will focus on and name it the purpose layer. The next arc, the next six months of your life. That's essentially like purpose in a nutshell. Essential few kind of helps you with this. Now obviously like you can do essential few for the negative side as well. So what are the things that I'm struggling with so much? And you'll just write those things down. So like in the paper... In the paper here, I had, oh shit, oh yeah, PPI, PPI, what the fuck, 
uh, interfering with purpose issues. And I had sleep management, anime, fapping, friends, money management, distractibility, and music. Why the fuck did I have music in there? Well, that stuff's fucking weird. That's why I threw the paper. Bro. I had this on my paper for a while. I, just, my, I had this on my paper. I had this on my wall for a while. Don't know why the fuck this is still there. Anyway. I should probably like renew it or something. I have like the new one on Notion. So that's the point. But essentially, uh, you want to also kind of do this with the things that are interfering with your purpose. Things that may kind of go opposite direction to your purpose. So for example, you're cutting and then you have a sugar addiction. It's like that's interfering with your purpose clearly. So just cure your sugar addiction. Self-explanatory. Well, how about porn addiction and video game addiction and a problem with mental clarity? So, like, you're doing your work and all of a sudden, like, your dick goes up and you start thinking about fucking porn. Or you you start craving video games. Well, you, like, if you had the work, you probably wouldn't crave video games. I'm just saying... But essentially, those things that kind of interfere with their purpose, you want to solve these things. And so you just find these things, and you see what you can do to help these things. That's essential for you is really just a journaling topic. And that's why it's so important. See, journaling is just fucking amazing, man. Like, we're gonna, we're gonna go into journaling in just a while. But journaling is fucking well. Like, listen, what is your purpose? Journaling about your purpose and journaling essential few, those were like the first two journaling topics that you're gonna have. But those two journaling topics are so fucking good, man. Because, like, those things are like what unlock, what unlock your vision, what unlock your direction in life. Now, one way. You would kind of set a priority to what goal, what certain tasks you would do versus others. It's something that I really like. It's called the one task rule. And essentially it states as follows. What is the one task that if I keep doing to this area, I will gain more progress than if I did any other task for this area? What does that mean? So for example, hitting the gym. No, sorry. How about finance, let's say. Growing a YouTube channel audience. What is the the single task that will get me the most progress? And if I keep doing it, I will gain more progress than anything else. Or if like if I did anything else, that would be uploading the video. It wouldn't be editing the profile picture for the channel or the banner or the name of the channel. It would be uploading a video. Well, how about health and fitness? Well, health and fitness. What is the one task that if I keep doing over and over and over, I will actually get more progress than if I did something else? It would be actually hitting the gym. Because if you didn't hit the gym and you just bulked up, you would end up becoming fat, but you wouldn't actually bulk up in, in the sense of like actually like getting muscle, right? Now, see, this can kind of go like... Obviously, like you will say... Well, if I don't track my calories, I won't be as efficient with my bulk. And you see, that's why, like, you would do a one-task rule, but you would do it more so in two tasks, or one task, and you would do another one task. So if that task, if I'd done that one task, what is the task that would get me the most progress? And then you would talk about tracking calories. Get my point. Essentially, it's really about doing the 80-20. It's doing, it's doing the, 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 mo the most, RO the highest ROI return on investment task that will get you the most progress in the area. That's the one task rule. And that's just something to keep in mind when choosing which tasks to do. I remember when I first started the channel, I made about like 30, I sat down for like, I would sit down for, I think, about every single day. And I would literally just ma keep making thumbnails. And then I, like, looked back at it and I was like, bro, 
What if I just recorded a video instead of making these thumbnails? I'm making thumbnails for video ideas that I might not even do and then I'm not even recording the video for them. I'm just making a thumbnail and sitting on my ass. Well, why don't we instead actually just make the video itself, record the video itself? Wouldn't that be a whole lot more higher ROI than if I just simply made thumbnails? I hope you got my point. Step four, habits. So as you know, this is like the most weighted fucking part of the video. We've talked about journaling a lot, we've talked about meditation, we've talked about all sorts of different shit, just kind of sneaky peeks, and now we're going to talk a bit more in depth in these areas. So basically, let's just hop right into it. You've got journaling. So journaling, we, we talked about journaling about purpose, journaling about essential few, and essentially what we kind of just went over her just kind of basic overview of like yeah you just get a sheet of, sheet of paper and start writing down like what is my purpose and asking questions Th that's exactly what journaling is i do want to show you my journal hold up let me just get this thing really quick so this is my journal right oh shit i just want to show you this really quick because i think this will help you a lot so let me Okay, this is about curcumins, by the way. So why don't we go ahead... Okay, so this is a journaling topic of the rule of three. And I hope you can see this well. Okay, essentially what, what I'm trying to like show you here is like I did the rule of three. It was essentially just about in every area, choose three goals that you want to accomplish. And they're kind of like long-term goals. And I just wrote them down. You see, I... The purpose one, I don't, I don't really have it because it was like in a super old journal, about like six months ago. That's when I journaled it. Probably said that a hundred times in this video. Besides the point. But essentially, that's just kind of how journaling is. You just get a sheet of paper, and you have the 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 journaling topic in mind, and essentially just write down the journaling topic. You go ahead and you start asking the questions. So, what is my purpose? Let's let's take that as an example, right? You go ahead, you write what is my purpose, you go ahead and you write down, well, the three goals that we talked about earlier. So how about we talk, listen, let's talk about essential few first. Just because essential few, usually we do essential few first and then you would do purpose. So you would write down the areas, that's how you do essential few. I think I said, and like yesterday, yesterday is part of the video, I said that we need to actually go ahead and write the goals first and then categorize them. You see, that's kind of a way to do it, but it's not as good as if you were just simply to write the areas and then write down those. So why do I say this? Because first, if you're gonna write down the goals and you might mention something like a karate goal, right? I wanna go ahead and join the squad for the, the my country, right? It wouldn't exactly be great because now you have to write an area for karate and you know for a fact karate in something that is actually a purpose. And so you're essentially writing down shit that's like, yeah. What I would do instead is I would actually write down health and fitness, finance and business, relationships, including friendships and family. And then you would have something like, let's see, spirituality. So essentially that's just kind of how like you would go ahead and write those goals. Usually, usually, you would just write those, and then you would write down the goals. And then you would write down about three goals for each area. Usually, like, I have this one here. It, it shouldn't be a rule for you to write three. I've showed you this. I, I hung it up again. And essentially, you would just kind of just write down what, what goals you have. It doesn't have to be, like, a lot. It doesn't have to be, like, three goals. You could just write the minimum amount of goals that you need. And you can actually write three and then summarize them in one. So that's kind of like you would write down like three as in bulk up to 86 kilograms, 400 kg deadlift and then carnivore diet. You see, these can be, can't be summed up because like those are three big goals. But if you had hit my calories every single day, go to the gym every single day and bulk up, you would just simply say bulk up because bulk up is like the summarization for it because you need those things to bulk up. And so that, that's just kind of one example for it. What I would also say is, when categorizing, because you're gonna like you're gonna go ahead and do the essential few for each area, you're gonna write down the goals and then 
you're going to essentially explain a bit more. So you're going to write one big goal for the area, and then you're going to sprout it into little areas, little like mini goals. And you're just going to simply go ahead and write mini goals, mini like tasks to, to complete it. So I, if I'm going to bulk up to 86 kilograms, I will need to simply go ahead, hit the gym every single day, hit my calories every single day, and just simply be consistent with it. That's just kind of the, the basic overview for if I was if I wanted to hit this goal. For deadlifts, it would be to deadlift every single back day so that I'll simply like be able to improve my deadlift. Because I'll be able to hit the muscle two times a week that will get me more momentum and overall that will like push me forward. This is like an explanation for the guys who like are in the gym. Most guys who like go to the gym will understand this a bit more. Now, when you have written down these goals and their mini goals, you want the big goal, the, the, the big goal in the area to be about six months to one year apart from you. So you have the intention of accomplishing this either in the next six months or the year, preferably six months, preferably. It doesn't have to be, but preferably, just because I like Purpose Layers to be about six months. It could be different for you, right? And essentially, you would just kind of choose one of the big goals. So you've got 2 million subscribers, bulk up to 86 kgs, and then you've got deepening all my relationships. So let's just say, for the sake of it, have friends for every area of purpose. Now, you see, relationships kind of like, it's, it's like we know for a fact it's probably not the purpose. So it's health and fitness or finance. It's either 2 million subs or the bulk up to 86 kilograms. Well, you see, what do I need more? Well, I'm, I'm pretty skinny to say the least. Maybe I should, uh, maybe I should bulk up to 86 kilograms, and that would help me a lot. Oh, but then you see, I really care about this channel. So, which one can I maintain over the other? So I can't bulk up while having the intention to fully focus on two million subs. But I can focus on 2 million subs and record videos and make all this amazing content while bulking up. So that's why I would make bulking up the main priority because it needs the minimum amount of effort. And I could still fit in my 2 million sub goal in there. So it's almost like balancing it out. But more so, I've thought about it as in... I'm bulking up to 86 kgs. And I'm going to be able to hit this goal and make progress on this one. So why do I just simply go ahead and focus on the 2 million subs when I could bulk up? I don't need a cut. So like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know your priorities. And that's exactly why you would go ahead and work toward it. That's the essential few. So you would choose one of those. Essential few kind of really helps you with purpose. Because you see, when, you, when you're choosing a purpose, it's going to be one of those. It's going to be one of those areas and essential few. That's why I would say perhaps even forget what is my purpose. Do the essential few practice and then you would go ahead and do what is my purpose and you would choose from the things you were in essential few. Hope you get my point. So going forward with this, essentially this is journaling. Journaling, I hope you understand my point. To sum this all up, you simply get a sheet of paper, let's just go ahead and open a sheet of paper, you get a blank sheet of paper, you go ahead, you get a pen, here's my pen right over there, and you go ahead and just write the journaling topic, question yourself, go on with this, be patient, and usually a journaling topic, it can go on, so you see purpose, purpose, I mean, for me, it took about a month to be able to fully focus and like get this uh, plan for me. It took me about a month. One thing I forgot to mention was that you actually need to journal as soon as possible. You see, journaling is extremely important, especially for you on monk mode. When you don't have a direction, and we talked about this earlier in purpose section, but when you don't have direction, you're not going to have a place to go monk mode for. It's like when the protag protagonist of the story doesn't even have a goal and he just goes into like the chamber of like the changing and he doesn't even have a direction he's not training for anything we want you to have a direction we want you to progress in an area and that's why we want you to figure out the purpose and the the, the only way to figure out your purpose is by thought and journaling and so that's why we need to do this as soon as possible this is a serious like step zero for you like this is like the thing that you need to do ASAP and that's the thing that's 
we're going to give you some significant progress. Give it its time. Make sure to go ahead and like, just give it its time. Give it its its full thought pattern. Make it click these ideas into each other and interlink these neuron and these brain connections, right? So now for meditation. So meditation is essentially focusing on something. It's giving time, putting time aside to focus on something, improving this something. So it could be or like thinking about it and improving it, improving it in the thought. So for example, let's just say two examples of meditations, death meditation and mindfulness meditation. Death meditation, you focus on death. You focus on common mortality. That is the fact that, well, we're all going to die at some point. And so like you just start thinking about like death and you start thinking about like, what if I died? And like, what if that person died? And you like, death meditation is very complicated, right? We're not going to get you to do death meditation yet. That's going to be a bit more later, but... Obviously, this meditation, like, a bit later, as in, like, after the monk mode period. Just because it's quite, like, you see, it's probably not going to help you so much. Probably going to fuck your mental health up, honestly. And so, until we fix you up, we need some kind of something. So, how about we go ahead and talk about mindfulness meditation. Mindfulness meditation is you focusing on mindfulness. What is mindfulness? It's being present in the moment. It's focusing on the moment. What am I doing right now? I'm recording this video. And so I put my full focus, my full thoughts into recording this video. And I do not focus on anything else. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to eat after this video. I'm not thinking of the, the meeting I'm going to have after tomorrow, right? I'm not thinking about the exam I'm going to have tomorrow. Like these things I am not going to think about right now because right now I want to be present in what I'm doing right now. That is mindfulness. And you see, most guys and girls on this earth, they lack mindfulness. They lack being able to focus in the moment. I'm pretty sure you've experienced this before, experienced this before, but essentially you remember that time when... Your mother was talking to you and you were thinking about what you're going to eat after conversation or that exam you have to study for or whatever you might be doing, the, the gaming session that you're going to have after you're, you're done talking to your mother. And you weren't focusing with her fully. You could have focused with her fully, but you didn't because you were thinking about that one thing. See, that is mind, mindfulness. Mindfulness is complete opposite. It's that... It's mindlessness. It's being non-mindful. And we do not want that. We don't want you to be mindless. We don't want you to go ahead and just like start thinking about the future and completely forgetting the moment. Because see, when you sat down and said, I want to go ahead and I want to talk to my mother. You didn't sit down to talk to your mother because, well, I want to think about business ideas or I want to think about what I'm going to eat after this. You sat down to talk to your mother because... You want to talk to your mother because you love your mother. And so would it really make sense for you to actually just like think about what you're doing, what you're going to do after the conversation or in the next day or two days? Hope you get my point. So essentially, what is mindfulness meditation? It's you training the muscle of mindfulness. How do you train the muscle of mindfulness? Well, it goes as follows. Sit down. You go ahead and you close your eyes and then you simply go ahead and focus on your breath so focus on the inhalation and the exhalation and essentially you keep focusing on the easiest thing to focus on that is your breath and just focus on your breath keep focusing on your breath and you will realize that like you'll start to think about other things and you won't be as focused on your breath as when you like first started. And essentially what I want you to do when that happens is just gently focus right back into your breath. So you are fo you're focusing on your breath and then you were like, oh yeah, I want to eat. I want to eat the spaghetti that's in the, in the microwave after I'm done. And just simply bring your focus back to your breath and just keep, keep going. And many people, they will get disheartened by the fact that they keep, like, missing 
the 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 the, the point. They keep f focusing and then losing track. And you see, that's exactly what you're training. You need to be excited for when you like lose track, because like that's when you train. Every single time you lose track and you bring your focus back, that's one rep. That's one bicep curl, as Hamza calls it, for the brain and for the mindfulness muscle. And that's exactly what we need. We need you to train mindfulness. And so th for this habit, we need you to train mindfulness. We need you to go ahead and meditate 10 minutes every single day. Do this practice. And if you want more info on this, I'll have a full guide on meditation. And essentially, I'll talk about a bit more meditations than mindfulness. But for now, we need you to focus on mindfulness. Whatever I say in that video, besides mindfulness, like literally, you could just literally open the video, watch the first section of me talking about what is meditation, and then literally skip to mindfulness. You don't need to fucking watch death meditation and space time bridging, because guess what? Your life's fucked, and you know that much. Why should we go ahead and waste time on watching uh, death meditation and uh, space time bridging? That's not what you're focusing on. And so if you didn't really understand much, and the video of meditation, the meditation full guide is not currently up, I want you to just repeat this section. Try and get a bit more of an idea on this. And then if, if the video is up, just simply go there and watch that meditation full guide. Currently, as I like, I'm recording this, the video is not up. But in the case that it is up and you're watching this just a bit later on, I would highly suggest that you go ahead and check that section. So now I'm going to talk about educational podcasts and full guides. Now, this is like, this is a big section, right? These are the things that are going to fill up your time schedule with obviously reading books. But we'll leave books alone just because these two are like quite interlinked, full guides and educational podcasts. So what are these? You've got educational podcasts. Why do I say educational? Because guess what? So how about I tell you a story? I remember back when, about in my starting stages of self-improvement, when I first went monk mode, I was watching, uh, I had like a, a playlist, I have a playlist on like the, the videos, the podcasts that I want to watch. And vi podcasts are essentially just like long videos that are like educational, mostly educational. And I saved a video of a guy called Lex Friedman like on a podcast called The Huberman Lab. And I like opened it up and I started watching it. And I spent about two hours like in on it until essentially like it finished. And then essentially I looked at my notebook and all I had were like five notes, five notes of little like just stupid shit that weren't educational, wasn't anything. And then I realized that I just wasted two hours of nothing. Now I see choosing the podcasts that you want to watch. You shouldn't just simply say, "Oh yeah, that that podcast looks good. I'm I'm gonna watch it." But rather choose by the topic, the to the thing that you need to improve. So when I first started on my self improvement journey, I learned about sleep, and there were like four episodes that I set on sleep. They were like the Matt Walker one, like the Huberman Lab. This podcast is like the best podcast you can watch. Honestly, Huberman Lab, check it out, bro. It's amazing. And essentially, I chose four episodes that they had on sleep. Toolkit on sleep, uh, Matt Walker, and then there was Master You Sleep and Perfect You Sleep. These are like four episodes on sleep. Because I suffered with my sleep, that's why I chose those four episodes on sleep. Because I wanted to actually like learn about my sleep and get these protocols and these tools to fix my sleep. And so essentially, you will not imagine the benefit. Bro, if I didn't watch these, I'd still suffer with my sleep today. Till this day, I'd probably still suffer, suffer with my sleep, and then, like, the, the, the afternoon dip, and, like, you want to, like, sleep in the afternoon, like, these things will help you so much. And essentially, I chose the podcasts by topic, after having watched that and wasted two hours. I was like, what the fuck did I do, bro? Like, that's just stupid. I shouldn't do that. And then, I just chose, I started choosing my podcasts with actual, like, the things that actually interest me, and the things that, are, like, need solving. And it's not, like, just interests of, like, basic shit, right? For full guides, I'd go for the exact same thing, but if there is a full guide that happens to get your attention and you're like, yeah, this area I probably need to improve. So for example, like something like masculinity full guide, right? You probably won't be thinking, oh, I need to improve my masculinity, but all of a sudden you'll just like be like, oh, there's a masculinity full guide. I probably need this. And so you'll just like go ahead and add it to your playlist. And your playlist is kind of just like the list of things that you just want to go through for the, the full guides and the podcasts. And 
So let me give you an example of a couple of podcasts that are really good and a couple of full guides that are like full guide channels that are really good. You've got Dairy of a CEO, Huberman Lab, and Chris Williamson. Those are three really good podcasts. These podcasts, all of them have like some bullshit episodes, but you'll just have to choose from these episodes, like the episodes that interest you from like these podcasts. Your, the Huberman Lab is probably the single best one out of those three. I'm not like trying to be like a shit guy here. I'm just like saying my opinion. Chris Williamson, he has a lot of like these like bullshitty thumbnails that like will probably like get you up. But you see, I just want you to like kind of like... There's just like a video of like these add-ons you can put, like these Chrome extensions that will help you with thumbnails. It's like on Hamza's channel, like the unfiltered channel. This will change your life in 12 minutes, I think. It's like a good video for you, like if you want to like, if you want to avoid these thumbnails. It will help you a lot on the dopamine detox. But essentially like Chris Williamson has these like bullshitty like thumbnails, but essentially like just ignore them because like there's a lot of value in his episodes. And then you've got basically uh, the diary of a CEO. Kind of the same thing, but you just want to ignore these, like, bullshitty episodes. The Huberman Lab, the reason I say it's, like, the best one is because, like, they don't have bullshitty episodes. They barely have bullshitty episodes. Probably the only two episodes that are so bullshitty are the Mark Zuckerberg one, the, the one that they uploaded recently, <clears throat> and probably the one with Lex Fridman. Those two are probably the only two that are, like, bullshitty. Besides that, all the others are, like, amazing episodes and you just want to choose by what interests you don't choose because oh yeah i'm interested to learn about sugar like i mean learn by what act well like by what actually like you need not by like just some random topic that i thought hey like let's add it in there's this concept of learning just in time not just in case and i like this a lot when you're curious about something you want to learn just in time. So just when you get curious about something, that's when you learn. Am I in the frame, bro? And then just in case learning is like something like school. Like you learn just in case. Just in case you encounter someone who is like, who has a bleed, like who was bleeding out, then like you will just in case, like learn how to like cure him, right? You want to kind of choose just in time learning just because it's like, it'll overall, you'll learn a whole lot better. When you go ahead and like actually like learn just in time for the full guides it would probably be the two like or the three main channels that i would recommend for you is hamza the guy who like helped me a lot alex hermosi he's, he's a guy who talks about finance and you've got my channel for like my full guides the main reason i mentioned mine are really just because i think i'm like i i I know how much effort I put into these full guides. And truth be told, like, you're watching one of these full guides. So the full guides on my channel, like, they'll really help you out. Same thing for Hamza and same thing for Alex Hamozi. Now, Alex Hamozi, he won't na name the, the, the episodes of his as full guides. The thing you need to be careful from on full guides is essentially... You don't want to watch a full guide that's, f like, below 40 minutes. Anything below 40 minutes, you want to avoid watching it. Unless it's from a trusted source. What does that mean? So if you if you see a clickbaity thumbnail on, for example, let's say, Hamza's videos. He is currently making these videos for teenagers right now. So he has like these short videos, like 10 minutes and 12 minutes, and somewhat like go for 30 minutes, right? These videos are like kind of clickbaity-ish. You don't want to, like, go ahead and, like, watch those. Instead, you want to watch the full guides. Those are probably the single best thing on Hamza's channel. And, like, they'll help you out significantly. For Alex Mosey, it's the exact same thing. He'll post, like, six-minute things, like, six-minute videos and, like, ten-minute videos, twenty-minute videos. You want to avoid these. Instead, you want to watch something that's thirty-minute plus, right? Alex Mosey's channel is mostly on finance. And I, I think that you really need to listen to his channel just because like he has a lot of good information so now for educational books you see the reason i say educational books so let me tell you this quick story right i remember one time i was like searching for books and all that and i like it was a time of where like 
there were a lot of like different things that were placed upon me. One of which was philosophy. Like I just got curious about philosophy and I was like, yeah, Friedrich Nietzsche and all that shit. And I remember I like like bought two of the like these two books, bro. And to this day, I literally regret buying these. Like, look at this, bro. Look at this. Like, it looks super good, bro. Like, but this is philosophy, bro. Like, I don't give a fuck, honestly. And you see, like, the guy, I literally, like, read, like, four pages from this shit. And literally, they'll put you down to the fucking ground, bro. Like, that guy is so fucking negative. And I'm not trying to fucking be, like, piece of shit to this guy. And, like, may maybe, like, guys who are interested in philosophy will, like, attack me here. But this stuff fucking puts you at a fucking ground, bro. So the reason I say educational is because you want it to actually benefit you. You want it to teach you something. So a couple of examples just to get you started in educational books. It's simply, I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. So you've got Indistractable by Nir Eyal. You've got How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. You've got, uh, you've got The 4-Hour Workweek by Timothy Ferris, and you've got The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. And I actually have three of these books. Let me show you. Oh, shit. Yeah, bro, I'm about to fucking... Okay. Yeah, so these are the three books. <sighs> oh, shit. Ugh. So look at this, bro. This is how to win friends and close people. Probably one of the single best books you can fucking read. I'd recommend that a hundred times, bro. You've got Indistractable. This is like the dopamine detox book, bro. Like this, this thing will teach you all there is about dopamine detox. I like, for most of these books, I'm actually still like quite reading them. And this one I haven't even started with. But you see, I, before reading any book, I kind of just like, first I learn about the author, and then I go ahead and I watch summaries for the book, the main points in there, and then, and only then, if the book interests me, that's when I'll simply like be like, yeah. See, these are like the single, like, these books are like amazing, bro. And... The, the fourth book, The Way of the Superior Man, I still, I wish to fucking get, like, a physical copy of this. You see, I'm thinking of getting a Kindle, just to kind of, like, a Kindle is like this, like, little tablet that, like, you can, it has, like, it's, it's like, almost like a bookstore, like a book library. It's really good, and I'm, like, I'm considering getting one. Just because you don't always, like, get, like, you, you can't always find physical copies of books. At least in my country, right? Says the point. These are like the four books that I would recommend to you as starters. Start with How to Win Friends and Influence People. And what I would tell you to do is... First, I would want you to take notes, but don't take notes with the book open. Take notes while the book is closed and away from you. And I want you to take notes on like the book while well, the book's not there. Reading all those four books. But also, I would want you to go ahead and... When you learn, for example, how about we go and just show you something? How about I go ahead and show you something? How about... So you've got chapter two, the secret of dealing with people. And then let's go ahead and... Right. And then it shows you at the end of the chapter, principle two, give honest and sincere appreciation. So as soon as you read it and like you go ahead and see what's in there, you immediately put the book down and you go ahead and try to implement what it tells you to do. So... How would this go? You would go ahead and read this and you would like, go ahead and see, uh, give honest and sincere appreciation. Then you would go ahead and immediately put the book down, go outside and like, talk to your mother. And as you're talking to your mother, you would like, do these principles, like implement these principles on her. So you would like, give her like, honest and super, so, so, sincere appreciation. So you would like, go ahead and like, tell her like, maybe like, like, I don't know, to, to do you a favor. And then like, when she's like, all done, you like be like, like thank you, or like the sandwich t tasted so good and all that. Let's give honest and sincere, sincere appreciation, and you would have implemented what you learned. This will like further get you on like the actionability mode. And I want you to implement it with all these four books that you're gonna go ahead and just like read. Start with how to influence and influence people, and with how to influence and influence people, also read 
indistractable. And then after you're done with those two books, you would go ahead and read The Way of Superior Men and The Four Hour Work Week. Just kind of saying you some priorities between these books. And that's kind of just how he wants you to go ahead and read. Why do I still have my journal? Bro. Anyway. I hope I'm in the frame. Because if I'm not, I'm going to cry my eyes out or I'm going to go ahead and edit this video. So last, but certainly not least, you've got exercise. So I'm assuming that if you're a dude who who's watching a video like this, I would imagine that you at least exercised a while. Like, you probably had a while of exercise, then you may have cut off. Maybe exercise usually. But in the case that you don't exercise usually, the simple thing that I want you to do is just go ahead and exercise usually. What does exercise usually mean? Well, that means I want you to train for like hypertrophy, or you could train anything, right? It doesn't matter. Just go ahead and do the exercise six times a week. That's what I would consider usually. You see, you're in a stage where you want to substitute all the bad habits you've got. And the simple truth is, there is not enough learning and from all of those different sources that we mentioned that will go ahead and tell you that learning is better than exercise. Because truth be told, those two will fill up your time together. There is no learning alone and exercising alone that will go ahead and just fill your schedule. What I'm trying to say here is learning and just going ahead and say, I don't, I want to learn and I don't want to go ahead and exercise. See, that will not fill up your schedule. And you'll realize that you'll start to like go ahead and just do the bad that snap right back. What I'm trying to say here is it all just kind of goes into filling up this timetable of yours. One thing I think I forgot to mention when I talked about the timetable is that you want to have 24 hours all that, like you'll have the blocks on like Google Calendar, you'll have the blocks, and you don't want to have a single minute uncovered by these blocks. You want all these blocks to be covered, and you want it to be actionable and easy to do. Easy to do in the sense that it will kind of just be, it won't be super difficult for you to do it every single day. It'll be flexible. And you see, one thing that I kind of forgot to mention as well on the timetable is that you will have some stuff that will kind of interfere with your schedule. And all you have to do, obviously, like you'll have it on your phone. And you'll just simply add a block for the thing that you're going to do and when, how, how long it's going to last. And then you just simply manage things accordingly. It's super simple, bro. But essentially, this, the, all these things, all these habits that we're putting in, the 10 minutes of meditation, which probably we're going to talk about last thing. The, oh wait, we talked about meditation, bro. What the fuck? Yeah, we talked about meditation. But the meditation, the journaling, the, the, the reading, the exercise, all these things, they want to fill up your schedule. And these are things that are going to replace your bad habits. And in any case that you go ahead and you decide to sleep less than eight hours, which by the way, like these things, the uh, usuals, you need to be having them. You need to sleep eight hours. You need to go ahead and eat right. You want to go ahead and fix these little things, these little problems. One thing I forgot to mention in the start of the video is that this monk monk protocol, the reason it's so extreme is because you want to fix all areas of life at once. You want to quit the addictions and the bad habits. You want to place good habits instead of these bad habits. You want to go ahead and you want to Instead of your junk food addiction, just eat clean food, eat actual unprocessed food. And I'm going to have a diet school guide, by the way. Besides the point. All of these things that are going to going to simply like fix your life. And you know like there are some things that are fucking your life up. You want to fill your schedule with things that will help you. The hour of video games is bullshit. The hour of anime is bullshit and Netflix. All of those things will fucking limit you. And so instead of those two hours of video games and anime, just simply place those learning sessions. That exercise session. And it's fine, bro. You can, like, exercise for two hours, bro. It's fine. I'm, I'm telling you this full-heartedly because, honestly, you're in a stage where you need to substitute these things. You need the basic attack principle implementation. Going back to exercise... 
Essentially, all there is to exercise is that exercise usually. Exercise six times a week, no matter what the exercise is, it does not matter. Just go ahead and make something that is easy to build, easy to build routine, and just do that every single day, or like six times a week, let's say. And that's really all you have to do for exercise. It's super simple. You really just want to fill up your schedule. These things are to fill up your schedule in ways that will improve you substantially. And honestly, you're like, you're probably thinking like, hey, like this guy's just gonna let me do all the good habits and like I can't even have one break from this. But we talked about infinite games earlier and you know that much. And so I think you kind of like can get a basic idea of where we're going here. This is gonna, this is gonna be an infinite game. This is gonna be something you're gonna do forever. You are going to put the intention of staying on dopamine detox forever. You are going to put the intention of doing these good habits and staying on basic tech forever. That's the intention you want to have. Then you'll learn more and more and more and more. And you'll realize that there are some things you can do that will go ahead and further you even more. And these are just teasers from me trying to tell you your next pathway after this is done. For now at least, I want you to focus on this monk mode protocol, because this will truly, truly change your life. So before I end this video, I actually want to go ahead and help you all out with this. So I've, go, I've gone ahead and I've made this template, this Notion template, and Notion is just kind of like this note-taking app. And essentially I've made you this note, kind of like telling you about the basic points we went over this video. And so essentially what this will help you to do is like, it'll just kind of be this basic revision for you. You can like make a Notion account and duplicate the, the page for yourself. Or you can just simply like copy the text as it is and just simply like move it to like your note taking system or like a note. Or just like literally sc screenshot it. It doesn't have to be like a note. I just kind of made that for you like just because like I thought this will help you a lot. And uh, yeah bro. So like I hope you benefit from this video. And uh, I hope that more than anything that this will tr like this will change your life the way like it changed mine and i hope that you will work by all these things and i hope that you focused and didn't like scroll the comments and that shit but at that point like me and you both know that if you scroll to the comments this wasn't going to benefit you to begin with and if you didn't we know how superior you became to all these other bullshit men that thought that they were going to watch <laughs> a fucking one hour and 30 minute video Essentially, what I'm trying to say here is that this is some valuable, valuable protocol. And it certainly was one enough to change my life. And change the trajectory of my life. From going like this, to going like this. And so, I hope that we'll do the same for you. And then again, I say this is just my experience, the protocol that I went through. So now I say, move it.